A little added effect here. There we go. Yeah, look at that. A little bit of an added effect for us. You got... <laughs> <laughs> I just had to. <laughs> I just had to. Nice. <laughs> it's rolling, baby. I wonder if I can do this. How does this is work? Can I do like a can I do like a stream within a stream? I bet I can, right? No, can I? Maybe not. How do I do this? Hang tight. Begins in eleven minutes. What are you talking about? It's already begun. Come on, it's garbage. There we go. Nice. How do I make it big? I can't make it big. Come on. Still learning here. Late night live. There we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, it's got a glare on it. Looks like junk. You black out. What are you doing? Come on, you stupid screen. Play. There we go. How do we do this? Take this and stick it over here. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> oh, my God. Some of Grandpappy's brew right there. Call that? Do they call that an ambiance or something? Don't forget to get your get your coffee. Put this back here. Ah, <laughs> uh, what do we got here? Is it time to start this yet? I think it might be, right? Oh, is my thing dead? Yeah, it's time to start. RC Guy Garage. What do you call this? Late Night Live with RC Guy Garage. What's going on, guys? What is happening? Check it out. Check it out. Oh, looks like I need a I need to throw a hat on. The way I can look better. Other than looking like a piece of garbage. Oh, I don't have my glasses? Yeah, I do. Wait, I'm out of my mind. Yeah, that's better. Isn't that dry ice stuff pretty cool? Hey, chef. I think you, uh, I bet you know where I got that from. <laughs> Look at we got. We got multi-stream here. I am surprised this is not dumping out. All right, how do I end this? End that. What is happening, guys? Uh, like I said, late night live with RC Guy Garage. It's obviously going to be the 
another new series. So we have COVID and coffee, and then now we have what's called Late Night Live. Because it pretty much is going to start like around this time. For me, it's called Late Night Live because most likely it's going to go into the AM probably every single time. Because you know that when we do these live streams, end up being like three, four, five, seven, twelve hour live streams. Might as well just stay right on and swap it over to COVID and coffee. Uh, I don't know if you guys got a chance to go check out the couple of videos that I've dropped recently. I did drop just another one uh, today. It was on the um, the DB Pro, which obviously is right there in the background with a nice hat on it. Um, this thing right here, yeah, I don't know, man. This uh, this DB Pro. Yeah, let's take the hat off of it. It needs to it needs to be seen. Uh, just like I said in the video, I know it's a couple bucks, but it's well, well worth it. Way well worth it. That's right, ice is pretty cool. What do we have in the stream? Let me pull this thing closer so my eyes can see it. Oh, and if you wanted to swap over to... I brought the um, I brought the stuff out. If you do have a uh, Losi uh, DB Pro, and you do want to swap over to uh, the same setup that I've got, I would definitely recommend. I definitely recommend the exact same setup. It's not copying. It's 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 knowing like what works and what's right. We even did mode attempts today. I am going to throw a motor fan on it, but um, with all that ripping that I did, let's give it like a, um, I want to say maybe let's give it like a five degree or a three degree uh, change because I was pretty quick bringing it back to the house. So uh, I got the temp gun on it and so just add a couple of degrees to those temps and that's pretty much where we were. And I'm really not afraid. Uh, of those temps. I'd like to see it lower, obviously. Um, but if you if you do want to go with that, this is the Habao Hex that you're going to need. Right there. Hopefully that you get that pot number. 22130. That's a Habao Hex. It's the exact right size. It just makes it easier. I have the links actually in the description below. And then obviously, um, yeah, it's a Traxxas takeoff tire and wheel right there so I just works man six seven seven three X um, and what I would I definitely like I got my got the tongs here for the uh, to add more ambiance to the thing here you know what I should do I should take it and stick it up here put another uh, thing of ice on it in there what happens is it gets stuff is pretty cool I like this stuff it's neat it'll probably freeze the car won't it <laughs> I'll put I'll put another thing in there after let the kind of smoke roll down let's see who's in the chat tonight we got 21 people already holy smokes we got Arma is the Arma is the shiznit Billy Bob is here too Wow, Traxxas is garbage. Ouch, Billy Bob, bad guy. We got Mitchell's RC, we got Billy Bob, we got Jerome Bolimer. We have got Thunder RC, J-O-R-C, Chef Beardsley's here, Mike Jernak, Barbecue RC, Demo RC. Uh, let's see, who else? Kevin, Kevin Ch 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 Chiasen. Hopefully I didn't wreck that. Crispies, what's going on, guy? Uh, Gambia, Gambia, Hawaii, 007, what's going on? Cracking coffee, you know it, guy. Uh oh Mitchell's retracting his own message. Mike Jernak, I think I said that. Lauren Cronish is here. Stack is here. GRC is here. And what are we looking Boy, Billy Bob was here early. Holy smokes. 
Smokey's RC. Hopefully I said that. I don't know. Paul Strauss. What's going on, Brian? Guy. I know it's Halloween, huh? <laughs> yeah, it does. My, yeah, it does kind of have that. Uh, does kind of have that effect. It's almost. It's almost done now. The water. The water is wicked cold right now. Like, like frosty cold. What do we got here? I think that's it. I think that's pretty much everybody that checked in. Uh, first, per oh Mason Fox. Mason Fox is here. Uh, let's see, Stack and Plasty Man is here. What's going on, guy? Mets RC, what is going on, brother? I'm glad to see you here. Mets RC, make sure you keep uh, Billy Bob in, in, in tune there. You know, Billy Bob can get out of control here. And yeah, so first one actually was Mets. No, first one was actually Chef. So we had Chef, Mets, Demo, uh, Paul, Lorne, and then that's, yeah. Then it just jumped in, so. Oh, who was first, like, right when it started? 10.15 is what I said, right? So 10.15, who got it, like, literally right at 10.15? Stack got it, the mad scientist. <laughs> so a couple of things. The um, couple of things I want to talk to, so or talk about, or talk to, or whatever. So the EXB is actually on its way. So I got confirmation today that everything's basically ready to go. There were some uh, little confusion issues because of their new website, apparently. Their computers changed over, and they had some kind of issues. I'm not the only one that suffered those issues. So, therefore, uh, other uh, orders are also having a problem, such as the Outcast 8S. So a lot of people that did pre-orders on the Outcast 8S, the orders are there. Uh, if you potentially didn't jump on it like within the first couple of minutes of um, it being dropped, you know, when the bomb was dropped for the second time, uh, you're probably going to be on a uh, extended back order. Not exactly sure why, other than they probably just didn't have their their let's put it this way. They are they're not prepared. They're not prepared for uh what we are doing to the hobby. Meaning um we're buying the stuff up like that. Uh ever since this pandemic. Think about hobby shops, think about, you know, stuff like that. Like even my LHS, he says that literally for him since the since the pandemic granted it, it affected other things in his business but since the pandemic pandemic he hasn't done this much business in since he's been in business doing hobby shops i guess so i think that's pretty that's pretty cool reckless hobbies in wareham um i have no idea how this guy has the stock that he does but he does i don't know whose pad whose uh, pockets he's padding I don't know which, uh, I don't know which, uh, what is it there? The, not the god. Which, uh, mafia king or whatever that they're, that he's, uh, in cahoots with. But he's got literally everything. It's crazy. The amount of stock that's in that store is just, wow. That's what a hobby shop should look like. And I think even for himself, I think he thinks his shop is too small. I can guarantee you he wishes his shop was two to three times bigger. Or should I say two to three times bigger. Is it going to stick to the body? No, it's not. Surprised. Make sure you get your coffee or your iced tea, whatever you prefer. Thunder RC. There you go. What's going on? What's a budget transmit? What? What's a budget transmitter would you use for the Creighton 6S? Budget. Why do you want to be on a budget? I, I, guy, I have no idea what to tell you. I have no idea what to tell you. As far as a budget transmitter, I don't know. Go with, like, Dumbo. When you have these vehicles that are big and fast... 
Um, but obviously, this and that, and I'm only saying budget because that is considered a budget uh, transmitter. The Dumbo transmitters uh, supposedly, I do have one. Supposedly, have an awesome range, um, and I'm actually going to do a range test just like Chef Beardsley did. But his his radio is not budget. But his rate actually, you know what? His radio is kind of budget for what you get when you think about it. Compared to what I paid for that DX5 rugged, I take that thing and throw it in the trash. Compared to that noble that Chef Beardsley has, Chef is actually in here. You might want to save a couple bucks, but yeah, Dumbo would probably be the only one, and it's just because, in my opinion, these larger scales RCs, the speed that these things have, um. I, I guess, I mean, I'm just guesswork here. Dumbo RC, that's the answer. Point blank. Fly Sky, GT5, Crispies, yeah, I don't know, guy. How much is that? Is that 20 bucks like the Dumbo RC? Dumbo RC, Dumbo RC one I got was like 20 bucks. 20 bucks, and it, like, reaches like 10 miles. <laughs> just, just kidding, it's not 10 miles. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm going to do a range test on it. You'll see. You'll see what I'm doing a range test on. There's a couple of projects that people think are on hold, but what they don't realize is they're actually not on hold. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes. There's a lot of research going into some of these vehicles that um, I've got. Like even how I did. I only did one video on my X-Max, and that was literally what's in the box. But it's because I'm doing research. Because the X-Max is old, and it's, it's a very solid platform that can be pushed. And my first video, well, let's say my second video, my first video running, that, those tires have not even hit the ground like, I mean, it went from the box to the bench. I don't even think it touched the floor. But uh, the first video that you see on that X-Max, yeah, I, I think it's going to perform how maybe I feel that the X-Max should. So. DX5C for 99 or, or you buy a Dumbo for 20 bucks. Right, I, I don't even know. DX5C for 100 bucks. Yeah. Is that is that considered budget, though? Yo, one, what's going on, guy? How are you, brother? You love your rugged, too. Don't listen to guy. He just wants... <laughs> he just wants a fan. Nah, dude, come on. I'm, uh, listen, I'm speaking real, okay? These are mechanic hands. These mechanic hands don't function with that rugged radio very well. That touch screen and my and and even the way the screen is designed. Come on, you know too. You know what I'm talking about. The way that screen is, man, it's got nothing to do with these glasses either. It's got to do with how they designed it. They should not have had such a big fat black bezel that surrounds that screen so you get shadows. That's one of the things that's an issue. It's it's casting shadows. And I guess unless you know the radio like, you know, like what do they say? Like by like the back of your hand or whatever the heck they say, that, you know, you are gonna have difficulty. If it's your first radio that has, you know, tech in it. You know what I mean? Where the Fly Sky Noble, it's 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 a cell phone. It's like Chef Beardsley said. All right. So this is this is how Chef put it. Chef put it this way. He said I'm the most technologically inept person. This is kind of around about, about the way he said it. And he said, for me, in order for me to be able to, to, to do this radio and operate it, he goes, anyone can do it. You know, I mean, that's now that's that's pretty good. That means that that is, I want to say, uh, intuitive. And yeah, it's 170, 80, 200 bucks, whatever, whatever you find it for. But it holds, what, 20 or 30 models, Chef? I don't know if Chef's in here still. 20 or 30, Noble for Life. There you go, right, Noble for Life. Thunder RC, what's the best transmitter for the Creighton? Oh, dude, I don't know. 
as far as your age goes, I don't know why that has to do with anything. Um, you just need to figure that out on your own. Just do some research. Do some uh, Google Google searches. Find out. Just t- type in, literally, what is the best transmitter under 200 bucks? And that's and and if that's the true age that you really are, and you've got 200 bucks to spend, that's uh, pretty. You must be rich, because that's not budget. Thunder RC, are you the one that originally asked the question? Because you said you said budget. I think you were the one that originally asked the question, right? Yeah, budget transmitter. What the heck are you? Why are you even saying a budget transmitter? Get the mobile. The rugged offers a ton of features. The noble just can't offer. Like what? Oh, you're gonna get into a jail. You're gonna get into a fight with Chef. <laughs> just kidding. You're gonna get into a um, uh, heated discussion. Gotta be careful what you say. Levi Rollins, what's going on, guy? The only reason why I want a Spectrum is because of the smart tech. Okay. I've got to ask you guys some questions here. Now, maybe it's just because I'm more of that old school, throw a carburetor on it and you're good to go. Yeah, I know. I, I know, Chef. I said carburetor on it. I'm more of that old school. Not plugging a computer in to actually operate something. Out of curiosity, why do you really need the smart tech? Have you really thought about it? When you go out and rip it, unless you're like literally a racer and you're being paid to race and you need all this telemetry and battery temp and voltage and I need to know how many, uh, I I don't know, I need to know the uh, tilt of the earth as opposed to my steering angle. Like, I am just curious from all of you guys right now, we've got 37 people in chat, do any of you really really need telemetry and all this other garbage like i mean it takes enough to literally just drive the vehicle and have a blast instead of like looking at a screen trying to figure out battery voltage and rpm and torque and it's just like i'm wondering from you guys right here 37 people there should literally be 37 answers right now going yeah, guy telemetry is stinking awesome you don't know what you're talking about why don't you end your youtube career or people will be like, yeah, guy, you're right. I'd rather just rip it instead of worrying about, you know, how, what the temperature is of my battery. Like, I mean, if you've done it long enough, you kind of know. Like, even with even with the DB Pro, right? God, just take out a heat gun. Just zap it real quick. You know what I mean? Just touch it, zap it, check it out. Um, if you fry a motor, you fry a motor. If you pop out, you know... If you, if you melt some wires, you melt some wires. You learn. You know what I mean? Who needs all this smart tech? You know, I'm not saying that, you know, the 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 Cybertruck that's going to be in my driveway is, yeah, I mean, that's going to be my first dabble in, you know, something that's <laughs> like way beyond me. But I want it, so I'm going to get it. But anyways, maybe that's the answer. Maybe that's the answer. I haven't even looked in the chat. So the answer is, why do you want the smart technology? Because it's there and I want it. So I guess that's the answer. I kind of answered it for myself. Uh, I just rip it. Right. Right. Nothing about tell tell them or what? What? Right. I like that. GRC, that was a good one. I wish I could highlight some of these calls. Right. Right, just rip it, right? I agree with you there, Jail. What's Jail saying? I want to know the rotation of the Earth. I want to know how far away my car is from the sun. I want that telemetry. I love the smart tech. The question of need isn't really the point. Yeah, it is. Of course it is. Do you really need it? Do you, or do you want it? <laughs> I love it. Telemetry is for kids. They like it. They like it, not needed. Just bash it. Right, guy? Right. Demo, RC, you retracted a message. What did you say, brother? 
I need it, just rip it. Oh, I don't need it, just rip it. Right! See, I love it. But yeah, I do race on the weekend at my hobby shop. Okay, but Jerome, do you really need it, though? Like, seriously. I, when I used to race, when I was younger, RCs, when I used to race, I didn't need no stinking telemetry. <laughs> I could hear. I could hear what my car was doing. I could hear that the, the ESC was burning up. I could see the trail of smoke, and I knew that I only had, like, seconds before, you know, it was all over. And that's that's actually a true story. I remember uh, I was actually in a race. I was really pushing the car. I wanted to win. I didn't actually win uh, this particular race, but it was an epic-like disaster. The ESC that I used, I can't remember what manufacturer it was. I just remember there was a black ESC. We're going back, like, to the very early 90s. Um when I used to race and I'm not exactly sure why other than the fact that I knew I was pushing the car it was a new set of cut brushes um I may have had wiring issues I'm really not sure but I ended up melting all the moss so like what happened is as I'm as I'm rounding the track there was still a couple of laps to go as I was rounding uh one of the turns I all of a sudden started losing speed and I'm like, I'm like pulling full trigger and it's just losing, losing, losing speed, still going. But now all of a sudden, by the time I'm rounding that next corner, first placer over here is already passing me. And I just kept, I just stayed into it and I just stayed in it. And I just, I don't know. I started seeing smoke and you start smelling that nice, you know, electrical, you know, fire, you know, you see smoke from the car, and I suspected that I knew what was going on, but I wasn't positive. Um, literally, almost all the MOSFETs melted out of my ESC. So, that was that was an expensive loss. So, I guess, yeah, if I had telemetry, maybe it would have told me, hey, guy, you know, you're overheating, but it wouldn't have mattered, because even if I, even if I knew I was overheating, I was still going to go. I was still going to push it, you know? Why not? 38 people cranking. Deontay, what's going on, guy? Throw that Holly double plumper on. You know it, baby. Dude, that's what my Camaro has. It actually has a, a Dominator. <laughs> it's got a little baby Dominator on it. Oh, we need to throw some more, uh, we need to throw some more ambiance in there. Watch it here. Look at that, huh? See ya, look at that, huh? Throw that right in the cup. Whoa! There we go. Good stuff. Had to do a little something different tonight. <laughs> I think the water's actually getting too cold for it. When the wind blows, it doesn't really work that well. Uh, have fun. It's a toy. I use telemetry. I love smart tech, and I use the chargers and batteries. I like the updatability. I like the spectrum support. They're upgrading mine for free. I like that it is waterproof. Right. See? And that's what's great. That's what's great because you know what? Let's put it this way. These creators, these designers, these whoever these guys are, they've been doing this for years. This is their job. How can we sell people on stuff? Oh, hey, let's put telemetry on it. Let's give them fancy screens. Let's give them all this stuff that they really don't need because they're just going to get out there and rip it. <laughs> but we'll sell it to them. And we'll make a ton. Thunder RC, where do you get dry ice? Um, we get meat delivered to our house. And in those boxes, there's dry ice. I didn't know there was dry ice because usually when it comes to us, there is no dry ice like left. It's just basically extremely cold. But in this time, this time there was actually tons of dry ice. Yes, 
You're not supposed to touch it. I think it's getting, I think the water is getting too cold for it. I might have to add some water to it. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm going to add some water to it. Add more water to this. It should be, should be a little better. There we go. Yeah, a little bit more. Perfect. <laughs> cold stuff here. You want some? Listen to that, huh? Perfect. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, where's Earl? Earl's not here. What's going on? Let's see. Yo, one. Yeah, right. <laughs> RC guy, where's the spooky me? Ah, there's no spooky music. I don't have an, uh, an Alexa out here. There actually a, there are two Alexas behind me. But RC, don't touch the ice with your bands. I know, guy. <laughs> you got to be really quick. You got to be really quick. I, already, I got my thumb today. John Miller, what's going on, guy? Quick steal his TV, bro. <laughs> Ah, oh, dude, I'm telling you, man. Um, so this this DB Pro is uh, way, way, way overdue for a uh, for maintenance, but and I'm probably gonna pay the price later. But to be honest with you, I'm actually all right with that because. Yeah, I'm not I'm I'm not finding any looseness with this thing. I'm not finding any wear with this thing. And like we've already talked about this before. I don't I don't only rip it on camera. Like when you're on camera, it takes away sometimes from your uh your own experience. Like when you're trying to film something, it actually takes a little bit away. Uh, uh, it takes a little bit of your enjoyment away. So I'll get out there and I'll just rip that track and have a blast. And I wish sometimes that I had a camera going because, yeah, there's sometimes stuff happens that, you know, you wish you had a camera because it's a camera moment. You know what I mean? And it's just like, man, I wish I had a camera, you know? How many times have we done stuff, you know, when we were when we we were younger or whatever, and there were no cameras, and the only thing that you got is you got the story, and the story does nothing, you know. That stuff that's actually working out pretty good, isn't it? I like that. I like the dry eyes. <laughs> Thanks for the love. I'm doing good for a fifty-year-old kid. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Hey, I'm I'm right next to you, guy. What you don't think that I'm you don't think I'm fifty? Um, I'm pretty close. I was born in 1971, brother. So yeah, I was born in 1971. So doing all this stuff and and whatever is, I guess I don't know. You're only you're only as old as 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 I guess you feel, right? So I know I definitely act way younger than, or at least I think I do. I think I act way younger than. Uh, I am, but yeah, whatever. It's just having fun. 
I know Earl has a Futaba. I want. Oh, he loves his Futaba. So let's put it this way: Earl loves his Futaba and he hates his Ruggeds. How about that? Earl actually has a couple of Ruggeds and he hates them. So, but he uses them, but he hates them. <laughs> you were born in 1834. Guy, you got some age on you, man. <laughs> Tower Hobbies TR325 micro receiver and the for 60 bucks. Nineteen seventy nine for you. Yo one. Wow. Nineteen seventy nine. So we're pretty close in age, kinda sorta. Hector Santos, fifty two and still ripping. Dude, why like why wouldn't you be? Fifty two is nothing. Dude, my, let's put it this way. 72? Who's 72? Get out of here, Mitchell. You not know 72. <laughs> you might feel 72 sometimes, but you aren't 72, guy. 1983. Nice, Paul. Uh, Levi, Levi Rollins. Do you know if the uh, hated ruggeds are the updated ones? Yes. So the one that I have is actually the updated one. So uh, pretty sure it does come in those three colors. It's got the special edition orange. They got that puke pea soup like exorcist green. That's, that's what that one is. So here you go. They got high visibility orange, which is the one I got. That's, I just, I liked it. They have the exorcist green one. And then I think they have that black and gray one, which, you know, has a has a nice look. And, and they're updated. You have to, you, you obviously have to check. Um, but they have shipped out the uh, the new ones with that touchpad. I have an issue with the touchpad because it's got that little uh, tether thing that you can put on a neck strap, which most of us, who the hell wears a neck strap? I know I understand it's for a racer. Well, I'm not a racer. So I'm going to pick that little, or I'm just going to flick that little neck strap thing off because what it does, it actually impedes my thumb from swiping up. My thumb hits the top and it's not able to swipe as much as I want. So I'm going to rip that thing off. I'll probably take pliers to it and just rip it right off. And you, what, hate it too or you like it? Uh, all right. So I'm not trying to be, maybe I'm being picky about it. Let's put it this way. I'm being picky. The price, the price that I paid for it versus the little things that are bugging me about it. Um, what the heck was that? That was weird. Um, the that little that thing is gonna like drop in at some point. It's getting close. Can it drop in now? Oh, there it goes. It's getting there. What it does is it gets a cross device around it. There it goes. Woo. There we go. <laughs> now it's ripping. See, we, I, I, everything gets ripped over here. You know, we got the uh, we got the thing of we got the thing of iced tea ripping in the mason jar. Um, we got candles ripping. Look at that. See, we even got candles ripping on the on the table here. Coffee's ripping. The hat's ripping. The only thing that's not ripping is me. I'm not ripping it. Uh, so that get back to that DX5 rugged. Number one, it's it's hard for me because it's just going to be another learning experience. Of, I'm sure it's great, and I'm sure I'll use the rugged at some point. I just, I'm so basic that I literally just want I want a trigger and a steering wheel. That's what I'm used to. All this, you know, technology is good. I do have to learn uh, what all the technology, you know, in that thing is so that I can make proper use of it. So it's going to be a learning curve for me. That's that's all it is. Give me a give me a Holly carburetor or a quadra bog and I'm good. That that's literally what I say. Now, when you start giving me like EFI and 
all this other garbage. I get it. But it also needs a thousand sensors, and it needs a computer, and all this other junk, and... I don't know, you know? I'm sure I'm sure it's a great radio, because they, they wouldn't be selling if they weren't, you know? I mean, look at look at J-O-R-C. J-O really likes it. He's probably freaking out in the, in the, in the chat right now. But... I'm 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 more of a basic just you know work with my hands kind of guy so the thing is ripping look at that thing what are you doing Woo. oh look at that look at that jet do you see the jet what the heck is that thing doing <laughs> look at it it's doing like a jet. What is it doing? Do you see that? What, what is it doing? That's weird. Is it going to, like, explode? That is cool. I'll tell you, that is kind of cool. <laughs> that stuff is fun. Oh, it just popped. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I don't think I want to drink that. <laughs> sounds like, sounds like bong. Right. Demo, what's going on, guy? Paul, what? It's about the... It's about the, right, dude. It's about to take flight, right? Don't crack, right? Don't crack your glass. Yeah, I shouldn't crack. I think the only reason, the only reason why I would crack would probably be because like if I put hot water in it or something, pour some candle wax in there. You better put Larry in a three hundred second. Why? What's going on? What's Larry doing now? Uh oh, is Larry Hammond Mitchell? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing, Mitchell? Don't make me put you in a three hundred second. Daisy. Get over here. Come on. <laughs> What's your issue? <laughs> She's a good dog. <laughs> That's unacceptable. What's unacceptable? What is Mitchell doing? Look at that. The thing's like popping and cracking and doing all kinds of stuff over there. <laughs> oh, I know what it's doing. What it's doing is because it's dry ice and it's in water, it's encapsulating itself in ice. Like because it's basically freezing the water around it and it's encapsulating itself. To it gets to a point of where it pops, and it pops the it allows the uh, the gases to escape. You kids, calm down. Uh oh, watch out! Watch out! Mets is in the house now. The big hand. Now see, Mets is the big hammer. Daisy is just doing her job, right? She is. I don't even know where she is now. She just took off again. She's going to go out into the woods and go, Ooh! <laughs> she's, got, she's got a pretty good bark to her. It's funny. You should see her when she gets... Um, she does her little tough thing. She'll, like, puff up. And you, you see her. She, like, flexes. It's, it's pretty crazy. Oh, it's ready to blow. What is it going to do? Yeah, there it goes. See? See how it popped? <laughs> See how it exploded? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, Daisy's Daisy's actually an awesome dog. Yeah. But anyways, RC stuff. How about Creighton? All right. EXB is on its way. Got confirmation today. The uh, Outcast, I don't think anybody knows what's going on with the Outcast. Um, that thing is ordered... Uh, I just obviously have no confirmation other than when I talked to uh, Horizon today, the guy said that 
from everything that he sees on his end for my order for the outcast is that everything is on schedule for that first delivery like you know first uh first whatever delivery so that's a, that's actually a good thing that 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 makes me psyched thing is just popping and, and doing all kinds of stuff over there <laughs> so you guys can see it all of a sudden it just goes poof. right finally back to rc talk so well i mean this is what happens on our channel we, we're let's put it this way think about it this way guy my channel is never going to be 100 percent just rc and if that pisses people off there are definitely way more better channels out there that have way better rc content than my channel does and you're probably going to be better served going and checking out those channels because i will do basically whatever i want on the channel you know what i mean i'm going to do if i'm going to if i'm going to make a cabinet i'll film it. if i'm going to fix my stove i'll film it if i'm going to work on a car i'll film it actually i do have to unbox that box that came in for my camaro last week so I am going to actually do a video on that, and I feel it's pretty important um, for me. It's something that um, – it was something that was unattainable at one point that belongs on the car that I was not able to have, and now I have it. So it's just – what it is it's doing is it's correcting – it's correcting a, a – Something that didn't bother me before, it's correcting a wrong and making it right. So, And sometimes you have to have patience. You have to maybe spend a couple extra bucks. But the biggest thing is to have the patience. Because if you want something correct, if you want your DX5 rugged with your Spectrum technology and all the other awesome stuff, I just like hearing the beeps. That's what I like. That's what I like about my Spectrum technology. That's what I like. I like that. That's pretty cool. Because <laughs> I'm basic guy. Just give me the beeps and let me rip. Tell me how many, tell me how many S I am and, and I'm going to rip it. So it's funny when people drive by. They like drive by real slow. They like, they get the rubber neck and think, what the hell's going on over there? <laughs> uh oh, somebody said something. Oh, yo one. Yo one. We'll see you later, man. Sorry. I just noticing right now. 5 a.m. in France. Right. Right. Yeah, because you're literally like that opposite side of the world from 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 me. Patience is one of the hardest things, dude. High metal. Like, you have no idea. Dude, I spent I spent on this phone. I spent an hour and a half. On stinking hold to Horizon to get my order squared away to find out what the heck was going on. So, and basically, here's the funny part, right? After I was done with the order, an email came through like almost instantaneously, in, instantaneously saying, basically apologizing for for uh, any uh, not discomfort, but yeah, it was discomfort for any discomfort or for any whatever. I don't know, whatever the words were. They were. Basically, they said sorry in the email and that everything is, like, literally, I'm set. So that's all I needed to hear. I needed to hear I was set. That way I can keep moving with the content for the channel because that point blank, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm having a blast. If you haven't checked out, it's going to blow again. It's like It's like building. It's like, you know what it's like? It's like a volcano. Watch, it's going to explode. It's getting there. Let's look at it. You wouldn't want to drink that. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> This stuff is definitely pretty cool. It makes you almost makes you want to drink it, but I definitely wouldn't suggest it. <laughs> yeah, the ball jar, right? <laughs> right, right. 
interruption, right, dude? A real interruption. You know it, Stack. Where was I? I don't even know where I was. We we're talking about RC cars and trying to get back onto RC stuff, and yeah, I don't know. Even so, even this thing right here. I've got this thing out here. So we um, obviously I ripped. I ripped this. This is a this is a hyper. This is a small one. This is a small little guy, but. Um, it basically came with tires and wheels that were basically the inside diameter of what we've got here. And putting these monster meats on this thing, and this thing is bone stock, except now. Now it's actually very mildly upgraded. Uh, I did end up, so what happened was this brace right here, this brace, uh, through the crashes and everything that um, I had done, and the ripping, I mean, think about it. Think about the tires and wheels that are on this thing. This thing ripped. This thing is, how about this? This this is this is the Creighton 8S, like, micro. How about that? This is the Creighton 8S micro. So this is a Habal Hyper uh, TT. Uh, it's obviously, it's a short course-ish type of um, truggy uh, configuration. And... From the get-go, um, I have not been good to this thing. And it's it's going to erupt again. Look at it. Boom! You see that? I'm getting to know that thing now. Look at it. Boom! <laughs> but, um, so what I did is I put a CNC um, top brace on here that obviously goes from the servo to the uh, differential cover and then also a uh, CNC chassis brace that goes obviously to the chassis. So now that's all interlocked, uh, giving now no flex in this front area where uh, the pin actually popped out, which here's the other thing too, right? Yes, now I know that there's going to be, now there's going to be any energy transference to more of the arms now. And so the next thing that possibly could break would be an arm. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to do the WD-40 treatment on both the front and rear arms, more the front, because the front have both upper and lower plastic arms or whatever the material is. Um, but this this thing was only on 3S, and this thing was ripping it like... And now it has, I got to put a fan on it, but now it also has a heat sink. Uh, I forget what the KV of the motor is on this thing, but it's only a little ESC. It's probably like a 60 amp ESC with probably a little, what, 20, I don't even know what it is. What KV motor is this? I'd have to look up the specs of the motor, but this thing rips. Uh, it does have mod one gearing. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. This this thing th this thing is pretty cool. There it goes again. Did I catch it? It's like <laughs> that stuff is pretty cool, man. I like it. I think I want to get some more dry ice. I actually have like a whole bag of it right down there. That's just melting away. Um, yeah, this thing's a little ripper. Uh, all metal chassis. Uh, metal hinge pins. Uh, metal. Nice beefy metal shock towers, and obviously there's there's like a bunch of upgrades that um, you can get for this thing. There's I even have CNC hubs for this thing that um, I will be installing because with how nicely this thing ripped it on that backyard track, I was very very shocked. So now that we have um, now that that backyard track is really getting nicely manicured by the vehicles. Uh, it is definitely, oh, and we also, I tapered in the body. This one didn't work as well because the body was already cracked. This side worked absolutely perfect. This side, you can see there's a little bit of rub right here, but that's because of the servo horn. But what I did is I used a heat gun, a piece of tape, and I tapered in the body with the heat gun so that the front tires would no longer strike uh, the body. Now... I think the driver's side is going to be totally fine. The passenger side, not so much, probably because of that servo horn. But that thing, man, if you haven't seen that video on that, you might be surprised how well that thing ripped that backyard track. Um, and the reasons why, obviously, I took, 
I've been changing my backyard track is because I need my backyard track to support more larger vehicles. And that's why I've been slowly doing stuff out back. We took the jump. It's going to do it again. It's building. The pressure's building. It's going to just pop. Boom. But um, uh, the, the original jump, which was a great location for it, for the smaller vehicles, it was great. Um, but for the vehicles that are coming, the Outcast, the EXB, obviously now being able to rip the DBXLE back there, and then obviously, yes, you know, the, the uh, X-Max. And whatever else Arma decides to throw out this year, which hopefully will be every other vehicle they've got in a fifth scale. So that would be cool. Um, it's going to go. It's, it's building. It's building again. It's going to pop. I can see it. I can hear it. It's going to explode. It's going to be a boom. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, yeah. I moved the jump. So the jump is massive now compared to what it used to be. Um, the jump is a, an awesome size. It actually has technically two parts to it. I am going to create another jump. I just got to get big black out there because I don't feel like shoveling in a wheelbarrow. I could probably use losing the weight, but nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'll just eat less pizza <laughs> and maybe drink less iced teas. <laughs> but um, yeah. Yeah. So we move that jump probably a good 8 to 10 feet away from its original location, which is giving it a much better run-up. Um, the track itself was increased this year by almost, not quite double, I probably added a third onto the track. Uh, and that was just by removing, you know, a couple trees and, and whatever to make it more easier to uh, maneuver, especially the larger vehicles. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I got nothing else to say. Somebody asked me a question. Right, J.O., Darkwing. Ooh, Mitchell. Bam, where is the Darkwing, man? Like how your track's coming. High metal, thank you, man. I actually like it, too. You always wish that you had more. And I have enough property to in that back there to really expand that track. But what's going to happen is that I'm going to be taking down trees and my wife, I get it. She doesn't really want, you know, too many trees taken out, you know, out back. I get it. But yeah, there's, there's actually, there's actually a heck of a lot more property out back there that I can expand on. Um, but not having like a bobcat or a track cat. It definitely hinders things because getting out there with big black and trying to maneuver dirt with a plow, yeah, it's I can do it, but it's not very pretty and it doesn't really work out. It doesn't really work out as you would expect. I mean, I've been pushing snow for years, so I know how to operate a plow, especially a V plow. But dirt is different, you know what I mean? It's just with big black, with the different levels of grading that you got to do, it's just with a plow blade, man, it just doesn't it doesn't work, man. I mean, you got a truck that's like the size of a 18 wheeler, you know, out back in my back track with a plow attached to it. It's like trying to maneuver it. It's like one of my one of my three point turns was literally I, I swear to God it was a nine point turn. In order for me to be able to turn big black around, I literally did a nine point turn. It was like literally sawing wood trying to get big black to turn. <laughs> it was funny. I should have videoed it. I could have done a time lapse. Probably would have looked funny. It would have been like if I could have done one of those time lapses where each time big black like backed up, it was just turned a little bit more. So it looked like the truck like literally was just right here and just went. You know what I mean? That would have, that would actually would have been a cool effect. I thought about video and the whole thing. I even had a GoPro in my truck at the time, but I just I didn't bother. You know what I mean? I was just like, ah, I just want to move the dirt. I don't want to worry about moving a GoPro around. You know, I almost picked this up and drank it. I got my hand on it. Like I'm looking at the chat and I touched the candle and even the warmth didn't like it didn't like phase me. I thought it was my coffee cup. And I'm just like looking at the chat. 
And what you didn't see was I lifted it up, and I'm like, oh, crap. That's my candle. We're not going to drink the candle. Right, thirsty, right. RC guy just got a got a GoPro. You got a GoPro 7? Nice, dude. That's the camera to get. Don't waste your time with the 8. And and don't waste your time waiting for the 9. New Traxxas Bandit, VXL, GoPro Hero 7 Black, or a 100 plus miles per hour project. Or a 100. All of it. All of it. Because you're going to need the Hero 7 to... You're going to need the Hero 7 to, to capture the 100 miles per hour project. 6.2 V8 guy. What's going on, man? Best RC guy. What? What's the best RC guy for 800 bucks? Uh, I'm not for sale. So... You throw out hundred bucks. I mean, eight hundred bucks. So I'm, I'm really not. For, I know they say everything's for sale, but I'm, I I'm not really for sale guy. <laughs> You're trying to buy me for eight hundred bucks. What is this? The RC guy garage auction. All right. What are we gonna get for RC guy garage today? Oh, buck. Okay, cool. Fifty cents. Come on, bring it on. <laughs> Wife got you a Hero Eight already. <clears throat> ah, it's all right. It's a good camera still. The only reason why I like the 7 Black is point blank because it's got a replaceable lens. Uh, to replace the lens, I mean, you should put it in a case anyway, but I've already replaced one of the lenses on my GoPros because I had it, you know, set for a shot. And literally out of nowhere, a rock got spit up and struck the, the lens and broke it, which is fine. I still could have used it, but... I... Dang! Hey! Hey! It's like eleven fifteen at night and I'm screaming. <laughs> oh my god. What was that? Get back up here. Get up here. Over there. Go lay down. Just relax. The good thing is, is that my dogs at least listen. The bad thing is it's it's like eleven fifty. Hey, 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 hey. No, you don't. Back up here and lay down right here. Relax. You're fine. Just relax. Go eat some bugs. No, don't be don't be sad about the eight. The eight's fine. I'm just saying for myself, I wouldn't get I thought it was gonna pop again. I'm just saying for myself, hey, you don't need to be looking out there. Just just relax. Sit down. Sit. Just relax. Here. You want to see? You want to see her? Yeah, here she is. Daisy, what are you doing, sweetie? Just relax. I know. See, she's amped. See how her ears are? You can always tell she's, she's like, amped because she her ears get, like, this certain, like, little perkness. Huh? Yeah, you're fine. I know. You think you're doing your job. But there's nothing out there. You don't need to scare the coyotes away. They're already afraid of you. Yeah, okay? You're such a good girl. Yeah, I know. You're fine. You know what's funny is it wasn't, it actually wasn't her that started it this time. It was the, uh, it was the, um, so my other dog, the white dog that is on the other side of me, I think. She's a um, she's an Australian cattle, so she's she's like a. What's going on here? Come on. She's an Australian cattle dog, so she um. She has a very ten a uh, very strong tendency to be like herding, and how do you explain it, man? She's very. Very in tune to stuff. Like, you like look at if you could see Daisy right now. She's doing the ear thing. She's looking out to the woods. They obviously saw something. 
We do have uh, coyotes and all that stuff here. And uh, with these two guys, not necessarily Colby, but with these two guys, they could probably take on a coyote or two. We'll see. Haley might get dragged. I don't know, man. Haley, Haley's a, a... Oh, my God. She just ate another bug. Haley is actually a pretty... What do they call it? A rough and tumble dog, man. She is not afraid to fight at all. But she's also not like a... She's actually not an aggressor either. She's a very, like, loving, laid-back, happy dog, but she knows when it's on, it's on, and she's ready, So, which is, which is pretty cool. Oh, my candle went out. Ah, uh, let's see. Question is the Losi Super Rock Ray a great buggy or truck? RC Pro-Am. What's going on, guy? I don't see any RC Guy Garage questions. Wait a minute. What? Oh, yeah. Nope. So that's good. It's not broken. I just need to start being lazy and change the connector. It's the last Dean's connector in my collection. Oh, you like Dean's connections too? They're uh, JORC. Golden Goose. Can't speak for the Super Rock Ray, but I love my Super Baja Ray. So the one person that I would uh, tune you into is Sergeant J. Sergeant J has a Super Rock Ray, and that's actually how I, that's actually technically how I came across uh, uh, Sergeant J was because of his Super Rock Ray. Because um, I had suspected that the Super Rock Ray was actually on my radar when it first came out, and what I didn't like about it was its overall size versus its rear plastic axle. And I thought to myself, just from seeing pictures, I was like, that looks like a bad weak point. And then um, I came across uh, Sergeant J, and his first video that I watched proved like what I thought in my head. He, I think he had just fixed his Rock Ray, and he was, he was out there bashing it, uh, where 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 he lives uh, and works. But he was bashing it, and um, the the hit that the rock ray took, I was just like, I thought to myself, I was like, that thing should not have broken. Like that's that was that was a real lame hit. And granted. You know, you always have to remember it could have been like fractured. It could have been an issue from prior, but now. So what Sergeant J ended up doing, you should go check out his videos on the Rock Ray if you guys are interested in the Rock Ray. Um, he did upgrade his uh, rear end uh, with a Vitavon, and that basically took care of all his issues. Thunder RC. My dog, Daisy, is literally eating all the bugs on the deck. She's bug hunting right now. Where are you going? Hey. Daisy. Get back up here. You don't need to do that. I've had the GoPro 7 Karma drone kit for one year now. And I use it once a week to follow an RC car with a little remote I put in it. Meant best car for 800 bucks. Oh, best car for 800 bucks? Dude, I don't... Problem is, is that... How... What's your style of driving? Do you know what I mean? And what you should do is just ask in general... Um, you are... Are you a Rush fan? Do I know who the group Rush is? Yes. Am I a fan of Rush? Eh... I, let's, let's, let's put it this way. If I heard Rush, I, I, I probably wouldn't change the channel. But I would rather listen to, like, Godsmack, Metallica, Static X. Um, music that is uh, what I call motivational music. I am definitely into the motivational music scene. So I like, you know, I like that kind of music. But, yeah, I wouldn't change the channel for, if, if it was Rush. 
I wouldn't change the channel if it was Aerosmith. I wouldn't change the channel if it was Steve Miller Band. I wouldn't, there's, there's certain, like, you know what I mean? I was born in the 70s, so, you know, I listened to basically whatever music my mother listened to. So, and, you know, I was, I was the kid, she's, she, all she's doing is just literally just eating bugs all over the deck. I should turn the camera around. Just let watch you guys. W let you guys watch her hunt bugs. She's literally having a blast. <laughs> um, no, my mother used to race at New England Dragway. So I mean, my mother was literally like, "You want to talk about having the the actual cool mom or the what would they call her? Like the cool chick? Like I definitely had the cool mom." Um, I grew up with first generation Camaro and Firebirds. Um, I grew up with uh, Buicks. Um, was it GSX? I grew up with Monte Carlos. Um, yeah, I mean, just like you know what I mean, like the, the 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 good cars, you know, the good cars from from way back there. So, would I change it? Nah. Earl Moorhead going. What's going on, guy? What is happening, brother? Earl, you know what? Right now, Earl is my Earl's my brother. Earl's my my West Coast brother, man. I'm East Coast. He's West Coast. He's my West Coast brother. Earl is an awesome guy, man. If you haven't checked out Earl's channel, you've got to go check out his channel. All of you guys in here, if you don't know who Earl Moorhead is, go check out his channel, man. He's got some good stuff on there. Earl, you missed, like, the ambiance. I had, like, I had dry ice bubbling and everything. I hear someone call <laughs> right, right. It's like Beetlejuice. You call him three times and he shows up. Yeah, this is the, this is obviously this is going to be the new. Um, you always got to be innovative. You always got to be different. So this is what the new series is going to be. It's a uh, late night live with RC Guy Garage. I don't know if it's gonna. I don't know if it's gonna work. It's not going to be like you know CCXRC and conspiracy theories, but. You know, we'll just we'll just kick back, have fun, just randomly talk about you know what we're gonna barbecue and what kind of iced teas we like, and talk about the fact that you know I was having heart failure because of my orders for Horizon Hobby. I thought they were all screwed up, and everything ended up being fine. And <laughs> GRC, what is motiv What is motivational music? <laughs> uh, if I could play motivational music for you right now. I would, but I get I'd get an instant copyright. So motivational music to me is literally music that just literally gets you moving, gets you, gets you pumped, gets you psyched. Uh, if I'm let's say like I'm working on my cars in the driveway, if I'm not recording like a video, I've got music like going, and I mean like. I don't know, for lack of a better word, headbanger music. Because I'm like, that's the type of music that I like. That's the way I used to be. But I like all kinds of music. I think the only two types of music that I'm not very fond of, and you have to be careful, I'm not very fond of, is I don't think I'm really into, like, uh, opera. Uh, I really don't think that I could, like, rock out to, like, Pavarotti or something like that. Um and I'm not super fond of country, but that is just because it's a, I'm not from like Texas. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, you got to be careful with what you say. I actually like some of my, uh, my daughter's music. My daughter has music that she listens to and I'm not, I'm not opposed to some of that music. It's not music that I would call motivational music. Motivational music, point blank, is music that just gets you up out of your seat and makes you want to go shovel a pile of dirt, you know, with, with, uh, with the intention to get it done like yesterday. Not, you know, 
ice cream making music or I'm going to bake a cake music. You know what I'm saying? That That's motivational music. Is DMX motivation? Yes. So actually, years ago, I actually used to listen to DMX. So DMX, Ja Rule, all those guys, I used to listen to their music as well. And that's what the funny thing was, was because obviously here I was the headbanger guy with the long hair and the whole deal. And all the job sites, you, you, all right, so you want to talk about some stuff, man? So on the job sites, on my job sites, I was literally the guy that had to bring in a car battery and a two-wheel dolly to bring in the stereo system that was, like, pumping inside the house. I would bring in two bazooka subwoofers. I would fire them into opposite sides of the house. I had a mile of base wire. Um, like, it took me... I want to say it would take me about a half an hour in the morning to set up the house for music. Um, car stereo, I had... Uh, uh, what speakers were they? They were regular, like, you know how they have those... Um, I call them the fake home stereos. They're good-sized speakers, but they're 8 ohm. Uh, they 8 ohm or they 4 ohm? I think they were four ohm speakers, but either way, um, I had an amp going. I, I mean, like literally, I had a car stereo out of one of my old cars. It was actually out of my '79 Trans Am. Um, and what was great about that was I bought that deck in 1990, and it had an auxiliary in, so I could hook up. I could hook up this to it. I could hook up my cell phone to it and play Pandora, or I could play like uh, MP3s, like an MP3 playlist or whatever. So we would have everything from Nirvana, DMX, uh, Metallica, uh, Static X, uh, even a little mix of like a couple of Stained in there. I, just like there's so many groups of music that I would listen to. And my job site, literally, my company was known as like, holy crap, here's the guy with the radio. That's literally who I was known at. I was known as. I was known as it's the guy with the radio. And what was so funny was that there were job sites that I would show up on. And I would put the stereo equipment onto the little dolly. Or I would, you know, bring it in, you know, over my shoulder or whatever. And people that had never met me would go like, are you the guy with the radio? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? He goes... We've heard like there's this guy that like brings in like a radio that can like fill the neighborhood. And I said, yeah, I'm that guy. And it was like, <laughs> and it was awesome. You know, everybody could enjoy it. And it was funny too, because we would have uh, the painters outside would actually say, hey, would you mind if we open up the windows so we can hear your music? And I was like, Go ahead, guy. Just, you know what, I, just make sure that the windows that are facing those neighbors aren't the ones that are open. <laughs> I'm telling you. I've got pictures. I, I could probably look. You know what? I might be able to look it up. I'm going to look it up right now in Google Photos. If I look up stereo in Google Photos, I might have an old photo of one of my last job site radios. I'm going to look it up right now just because somebody asked. Google Photos. And I'm going to type in radio in the search. Sometimes this actually works. Let's see. No, 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 no. Search my photos for radio. R A D I. I'm going to have to like literally go like all the way back. And isn't that nuts? So this isn't, this is how intuitive Google Photos is. So this is actually one of the pictures that I took uh, with my, um, I had a scanner attached to my truck, but look at that. That's a picture of the inside of my truck. 
Now, how did Google Photos know that that was a radio pic? Because obviously the radio is up at the top. It does not look like... It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to find my old stereo system. I know I had taken a couple of pictures of it, too. I might be in the wrong account. How do I switch accounts? I'm going to switch out of that account, and I'm going to go into another account that I've got, which may have... Search. See, it's getting my photos. Radio. Radio. Want better photo search? Go. No results. I know I've got pictures of my radio. You just tripped over my... She's, she's like so zoned in on trying to get bugs. I don't know. I can't find it. I used to. I used to actually have a couple of pictures of it. I might be able to find it, like in an old computer or whatever. I prefer to listen to pan flute music. Right there, you go. You know, it's whatever floats your boat. Right. You know, if you want to listen to flute music and you know bake a cake and you know wrench on some RCs. You know, some people like to. You know, mellow out and be relaxed. I'm not that kind of guy. <clears throat> I hate rap, but love Motown. I hate country, but love Southern rock. There you go, Shade Tree. All right, somebody here. I hear so much Mexican music that I can sing. Oh, that's, hey, that's awesome. <laughs> that's funny, man. That's actually cool. So much for that RC talk. I know, guy. Whatever. <laughs> we'll get back to it. Somebody, somebody, talk about RC Fosgate. Right, Rockford Fosgate. Right, right. Daisy, don't you start. Daisy, Daisy, get back up here. Come on. Right. <laughs> Rockford Rockford Fosgate. Right. Rockman Fosgate. They used to be a good company, man. When Rockford Fosgate sold out and became just Best Buy junk, that that's when that's literally what happened too. Rockford Fosgate sold out and became Best Buy junk radios or junk amps and just Uh, I'll tell you, a good so a good amplifier back in the 90s um, were called ADS power plates. And I used to run ADS power plates. And those things were the cleanest sound that I had ever had. The sound that came out of my 79 Trans Am was, it wasn't overly loud. It was just very clean sounding. Very solid, you know, like nice solid bass. Um, just clean. There's a difference between clean and loud. Thunder RC, how did you get into RC? So, to be quite honest with you, when I was in my, I had been like 10 or somewhere around there. Um, somewhere around there. I'm, I'm, I, I don't remember my actual age. Maybe it was 12. Um, it's like literally a solid block of ice. That is nuts. Yeah, I think I was like around 12. My mother bought me a, um, it was either my mother or my grandfather. It might've been my grandfather. You know, I'm, I'm going to bet it was my grandfather. Um, my first like. RC that I had a blast with was a Tyco Turbo Hopper that was 9.6 volts. That was literally the best, like, little... I think it was even bought at uh, Child World, which um, was like a store like Toys R Us was, but I, it was called Child World. 
a Tyco Turbo Hopper was my first like RC, and then I think within a couple of weeks I was trying to figure out how to get it to go faster and like just it had a two speed transmission and di- you know digital you know proportional you know steering reverse and uh proportional yeah proportional steering thing was awesome it was you know obviously spring shocks and but it was a blast it's what got me into that and then from there i had had that for a while and then i think i had had a couple of non-memorable really rc things because there was no going to a hobby shop uh for me when i was a kid that the you know my mother my mother just didn't have it you know she was she was doing enough to just you know scrape by so i was i was a happy kid by the way too so very happy kid my mother did my mother did awesome single parent she did awesome um i was the kid that brought her flowers so but anyways, uh, and then my first real RC car was a used RC10 gold pan that I bought off a buddy of mine. Um, and then because I liked that so much, I bought my own kit. And then when the uh, Kyosho Ultima came out, I bought an Ultima. And it basically just took off from there. Then I got a... Um, Traxxas, uh, 2.5, uh, T-Max, and then I got an E-Max, and then I got an E-Revo, and then I, I always had planes, too, I don't forget my planes, but I had planes, like, forever, so since I was, like, that age, 14, 15, I think, is when I started flying planes, and obviously, we lived on a pond, so I had boats, um, but yeah, and then, then when I turned 16 and a half, I got something called a license. And once I got my license, I didn't I didn't touch an RC car for I think when I got my license 16 and a half, I probably didn't really touch another RC car for real like probably until I was 19 i think then when i was 19 i started racing again i say again i started racing again and i did that probably up until 95 six somewhere around there because i think that's when i also got my t-max though no that's so that makes sense so i got my t-max around that 90 95 or 6, I think. 95 or 6 was when I got my T-Max. Yeah, I think that's what it was. In between then, I had some kind of a... I had some kind of a on-road gas car. I can't remember what it was. Other than also I had my Jackrabbit. So I also had a roving Jackrabbit. Uh, that was quarter scale. That was when I was 19. So I got that when I was 19. That's when also I raced. That's when I made my JRX Pro. So I made a JRX Pro around that 19, 18. Man, I'm going back. But anyways, yeah, I've kind of always been into RC stuff. But, you know, you get a license. You know, other things become more important. Uh, Girls become more important. You start chasing girls. Uh, and yeah, you get married and, and things change for the better. And, uh, then eventually, you know, when you're in your, uh, twenties, you know, like mid twenties, you have children and then eventually you start, you know, doing more RC stuff because you want to get your kids into it. And then... Then your dog dies, and you buy another RC car, and it jump starts you getting back into the RC hobby. So there you go. This is the long story from RC Guy Garage. <laughs> Boy, that was long winded. Check it out. What? Check it out. Nits. 
an 80s RC-10. Oops. Oops. Oh, dude. I hope I did not. What? Whoa, Tyco Turbo Hopper was your first RC too? Dude, 6.2 V8 guy, that is awesome. You painted your spring shocks. <laughs> your neighbor, what? Your neighbor got an actual Kyosho Ultima? Wow, dude, that is crazy. See, isn't that nuts, man? I remember when I got my Ultima. I thought the Kyosho Ultima was going to be like the ultimate. Little did I know, Associated was still kicking its butt. Tyco Rebound. Nah, I don't remember that. I think there was like a Tyco, like, hovercraft. I vaguely remember, I vaguely remember there being a hovercraft. And this is how bad my memory is. I don't remember if it was my hovercraft or if it was a friend of mine's hovercraft. I know I had, uh, one of my friends was very rich, like, you know, from my standpoint as a kid, man, he had, like, every, everything. Like, he had the ColecoVision, he had the Atari, he had the Commodore 64, 128, he had, uh, everything that came out, like, he had it, uh, he had that, the, 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 uh, Star Wars, the Star Wars at-at thing there, the Walker, you know, he had the Millennium Falcon, the X-Wing, you know, all that cool stuff. And what was cool was that, you know, he, you know, when he was done with something, he'd give it to me. Be like, yeah, you have it. Like, okay, cool. Hand me down <laughs> when I was a kid. Hand me down, hand me down toys for my friends. Earl. What is that? That's not what I'm doing. Send you a picture of your second build, 2003 world record car. Oh, jeez, Earl. Wow, Earl. Can I, can I put that on here? Can I, like, show people that? <laughs> it's got a it's got a racy kind of racy something on the photo. But can I can I throw that picture on the live stream here? Cause I don't wanna I don't wanna share something that you don't want shared. That's pretty crazy though. Wow. Like I said, man, I keep telling you guys, Earl Earl yeah, okay, so Earl is way more of a of a thing than you guys realize. So his his Earl's his Earl's 2003 record what is it record winning what'd you call it that's Earl's 2003 record winning car right there Mustang I know it's got the racy picture but it is what it is it's cars it comes it comes with the uh, comes with the program so. That's that's Earl Moorhead right there. Not 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 that. That's not Earl Moorhead right there. But that's his car. <laughs> oh god, Earl, that thing is awesome. That is cool. So now we know why Earl likes Mustangs. Oh, his his actually here you go. Here's the his the actual cover. So Earl's car was on a magazine. Right there. Mustangs and fast forwards. That is stinking awesome. You've even Earl, you even have a little cobra uh you even have a little cobra like uh what do they call those? Little the little things that you can put in text. That's funny. <laughs> Earl rolling, right? Earl rolling and Fabo. Ice, ice Mustang, right? 
Uh, John Miller, you first. Real RC kit, uh, real RC, real kit RC car was a Tamiya. Oh, dude, you know what? I remembered when I was a kid, there was a movie that they had a Subaru Brat in. I can't remember what the movie was, but there was something about a chain link fence. I think they had to go through the chain link fence or under it with a Subaru Brat. And I remember being a kid going, I want that. Like, I was young. I don't know how old I was. I was probably in my teens. Probably in, I could have been in my 20s too, I don't know. But I remember watching that movie and going, oh, I want that RC. Cobra on my arm tattoo of a Coves. I <laughs> want a COVID in RC Guy Garage. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And people are chanting, chanting Earl's name right now, right now. More head, more head. Right. But that actually doesn't sound good. <laughs> when you say it like that, though. Right. That is awesome. Cobra, cro Cobra, what? Cobra, not cover. Oh, Cobra and RC Guy Garage, right? <laughs> ah, my eyes. My eyes are doing that burning thing again all of a sudden. Also, Subaru was the first real car my cousin taught me. Ah, oh, you know what, man? The Subaru Brat was definitely... You know what I, you know, sometimes how you wish they would bring back something, but bring it back like better than ever. So like, obviously, you know, Ford released the new Bronco. So the, the remade Bronco, which is supposed to be, I, I am looking at that as a direct competitor to Jeep, which, ah, uh, man. Some people like it. Some people don't. Um. I'm I'm on more of that side of you know what I, I'd roll it I'd I'd have that thing in my driveway why not you gotta you gotta like experience different things you know what I mean you gotta drive different cars like so far I have not driven I have not driven a BMW I have not driven Mercedes I have not driven uh, I have not driven an older Mopar I've obviously driven Dodge trucks. Dodge trucks that I've driven were always rough around the edges. Um, what else have I not driven? I've, I've never driven a supercar. Um, I want to say my first supercar that I'll drive will probably be the the Tesla Cybertruck because technically that's going to be a supercar except it's going to be a truck. So that'll probably be that'll be the most technologically advanced out of this world thing that I've ever driven. Uh, yeah. But I've driven a bunch of cars. Oh, this is also my first Jaguar that I've ever driven. And driving a Jaguar, granted, it's a, it's a, it's a 2000, but something about it, man, it, it's weird. It has like a, a, and I know this, this, these like two words don't seem to go together. But when I did take it for a rip down my street, and I took it for a rip, um, it's a supercharged V8, Van der Plas, and it was like a, like an odd sense of, like a, a, a boat feel, but not. Almost like a sporty boat feel to it. It was weird. I, I've never felt that type of drive. Like it was smooth, but also felt like it, it, it felt like it could go. It felt like it would actually be able to corner. Um, but it felt like 
solid and planted. It, 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 it has a different feel. And yeah, it's only a 2000, so I'm sure the cars have massively changed nowadays. But like when I jump into my wife's Honda CRV, that's just like a, it's a car. It's just a regular car. You know what I mean? There's nothing special about that other than the fact that, you know, you can take it anywhere. It's got all-wheel drive. It's safe. Um, I can put my RC cars in the back of it. Uh, my dogs fit in the back. I mean, come on. I own a Geo Tracker. I own a 1995 Geo Tracker, too. It only has 78,000 original miles on it. So, Geo Tracker. Obviously, I've got Big Black. I've, I've you know, owned Chevys in the past. Uh, I had a, a Silverado. What else? Uh, Eddie Bauer, Expedition. Uh, every once in a while, I drive my son slash daughter's Ranger. And I actually like driving that. I like driving all different types of cars. It's funny. My wife is like, why do we need another car? I'm like, honey, oh, we also have a 1999 VW uh, TDI Bug, which I've got to, I, I got to get working on that thing. I know we totally strayed off of RC, <laughs> but it is what it is. Car, regular car, <laughs> regular car guy, right. 1995 Geo Tracker still running at 75,000 miles. Yeah, it's got 78,000 miles. And put that thing in a museum. Yeah, it's um, it's in very very good shape. Uh, 78,000 miles. Um, yeah. 1995 Geo Tracker. There's a two door, you know, two door hard top. Uh, put the put the dogs in it. Put the RC cars in it. Bomb around, four-wheel drive. Uh, everything works on it. It starts like every every single day you turn that key, it starts. Oh, I also had a um, 04 uh, YZF-R1. That thing, that thing was awesome. That thing was fast, man. My wife hated that. She hated being, well, she enjoyed it, though. She enjoyed, like, going for rides. And I, I miss that. I actually, there's something about a bike that a Jeep can give you a very similar feel when you have the top off and the doors off. The Jeep gives you, or at least gave me, because I, I also had a Jeep, too. I had a 95 uh, 4.0, uh, you know, the last of the real Jeeps, they called it. It was a 95 with a 4.0. Um, that thing was, that thing was cool too. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get back to RC stuff. They didn't last long out here. What? Oh, what the, the geo tracker. Yeah. 87 firebird with 6.2. <laughs> yeah. Fastest cruiser you ever rode? An 1100. Changing again. What about Suzuki? <laughs> Quadzilla? Dude, I had a... Um, I also had the uh, the Honda, uh, F uh, Honda 400DX. I had a 400DX. My son had a... Um, my son had, at the time, he had a Casilla, uh, Casilla 50, and then I got him a Honda 70, and my, my daughter, my youngest daughter, ended up riding the Casilla 50 while he was riding the 70. That was pretty cool. But yeah, the YZF-R1, man, ooh, that thing was, that thing was quick. That was also the first time I ever brought when, so that was a bike that actually didn't go in my garage. Where my where my shop is right now in my house, that's where my that's where my R one would would stay. I I liked that bike that much. I literally brought it in the house. Like I just I would I would bring it through the slider. It had like a little ramp and everything. I just ramp it right up over the slider. 
I would leave it in the house, in my shop, where my RC stuff is right now, was where my R1 used to sit. <laughs> Man, and I don't have any pictures of that either. Because pictures weren't a thing, you know? You just had what you had, and you didn't share anything, you know? People just knew what you had. Quadzilla. A friend of mine had uh, was into the Raptors. God, those Raptors were loud. Whenever, like when we would go out, when we would go out riding, um, all I would have to do was shut my uh, 400EX off and just open up my ears. Like I'd take my helmet off and listen and I could find him. I would know exactly in what direction to head towards because that thing was so stinking just loud. Like, I mean, it the Raptor had just a different kind of sound to it. Robbie's RC. Did you see my post on Facebook on RC Car? On RC Car Garage? Wait a minute. I didn't see anything. Robbie. Wow. Earl had a... Earl had a spread on that car. Oh, I wish I could see the motor. Earl, is that a Whipple? Earl, did that thing have a Whipple charger on it? Oh, is that... I can't tell. No, that's not a Whipple. What is that? Well, here's a picture. Here's a picture of the supercharger on his Mustang. Can't really make it out very well. Can't really make it out well. It must be um it must be laminated. Kind of has a laminated look to it. That is crazy, Earl. Holy smokes. What, you even had a sound system in there, or are you showing a fuel cell? He had JL audio in there. Oh, where is it? Yeah, I think it's laminated. That's why the pictures aren't coming out well. Wow. Earl, that is insane. Holy smokes, Earl. Wow. Oh, it's a Kenny Bell. It's a Kenny Bell. That's right. You told me that crap. Jesus. That's insane, Earl. Wow. That's that's insane. Uh Robbie, let me get back to that. I'm sorry, I just there were more pictures from Earl. I had to check it out. I'll check it out right now. Let's see. Let's see how do I find, how do I find my own group? <gasps> Rob. Rob. Holy crap. All right, all right. I got to show this. I won't obviously show your name. Check that out. You want to talk about the brat? What do you got right there? That is awesome. 
Oh my god. But that oh, we were talking about that. I wish Subaru would come back out with the brat, but do it right. Like give it like give it some real. Not don't come back with with junk and you know, uh, just come back with a brat that looks right. Something that can be taken off road like that would be, you know, do you re, do they even realize that if they came back with the Subaru Brat and did it right, how many people would probably buy that thing? The Brat was awesome. Mitchell, Guy, thank you, sir, for that. Flying high, brother. Thank you so much, man. Definitely appreciate that, brother. You're just going to get an updated Baja. Right, Subaru, VSX. I mean, a VX was a killer. A new Subaru Brat, brat with a WRX motor in it. Right. Dude, I mean, they, you know they could do it right. Think about what, what the Ford Dish did with the Bronco, right? Now, Jeeps got, obviously, you know, they did their JL and did their Gladiator. And if Subaru just, like, I mean, come on. Yeah, I know it's a two-seater, but so what? Bring it back. It would sell. It literally would sell. Do you remember the movie The Drivers Had Turned? Dude, is that the all right? Is that the movie then? Is that the movie that I'm talking about? Where it was it was a it was a kid with like a dirty blonde, uh, medium length curly hair, I think, and he had like the big massive you know two stick like like helicopter controller that was controlling that thing, and I think like I think it even had FPV right. Uh, Rob's RC. It, that's the thing, right? 2012 Outback vibrated on the highway above 55. Right, right, <laughs> right. Well, it is okay. Okay, so what's the name of the movie? You love your Subaru Outback, right? It laughs at snow, right? Well, you know what? Uh, one of our daughters actually had a Subaru Outback, and she loved it too, but it definitely was one of those weird cars that it had an in, inordinate amount of wind noise going down the highway because of the way the doors were designed. The wind noise was insane. Like, you know, because obviously there was no frame around the glass. It was just glass that rolled up into the channel. So... The wind noise going down the highway was just n n no good. No bueno. Put a WRX motor in a brat, right? Hey, you know, whatever. Super brat, like a real life Arma Granite. There you go. <laughs> Think about it, though, man. Imagine if they brought the brat back, like, looking tough. They could do it. They could definitely do it. People would buy it. People would totally buy it. Even if they kind of, you know, put some retro styling in and just made it look good, you know? They definitely have the technology to be able to do that. <laughs> Shouldn't you be using that money to fix all your broken RCs? <laughs> you know what? Larry, Larry, Larry needs a never ending supply of money to fix everything that he breaks. Like every single time. I swear to God. I, 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 I'm being dead serious here. I swear that every single time. I'm probably wrong. It's got to be like 90% of the time. 
Larry Mitchell takes an RC out, you know, to do filming and, and whatever he's doing or to get out there and rip it. And it comes back. It comes back limping. <laughs> it's crazy. He just he murders stuff. He kills his RCs. He drowns them. He just, I don't know, breaks wheels off. Uh, he goes way too fast doing drag races. Rips the tires right off. He paints up a body. He's all proud about the paint job and literally slams it into a curb and all the paint blows up. <laughs> blows off. And it's like, hey, well, you got a new, uh, you got another body to paint now. Oh, my goodness. Casey, what's going on, guy? I didn't even know you were here. Evo, what's going on, man? You would in a heartbeat, what, buy a brat? Good point now. I'm more bitter. Good point now, I'm more bitter than I remember. So this is what's great, man. This is literally, this is just a hangout. We're all just chilling and having a good time. That is cool, though, Rob. Robbie's RC, that is definitely cool, the brat. I got to put, I got actually got to put a thumbs up on that. Actually, I'm going to do more than a thumbs up. That's going to get a special. That's going to get a special one right there. Oh, man. Look at that thing. I can I can even zoom into it, I think. Come on. Let me zoom into it. Oh, it won't let me zoom in. It keeps not allowing me. That is pretty cool. That that is cool. I'm telling you, man. They they should bring Brat back to Brat. They really should. They definitely should. What are we looking at? We're already looking at ten past twelve. Holy smokes! Hey Daisy, what you doing, honey? I see a tail wagon. I think my coffee's just about done. It looks like the dry ice is just about done. Yeah, I don't think the dry ice is dry ice anymore. But I have more. I have more to put into it. We'll get some more. Get some more effect going. going again <laughs> that's a good one now look at that we just look at that <laughs> hey anything to have some fun right look at that look at, look at the effect Whew. streaming right over the db pro look at that does that look nice We'll keep going. We'll literally keep going until the dry ice is gone. That's definitely a cool look. <laughs> Strange brew. <laughs> right. Got to keep, got to keep the, uh, got to keep that DB Pro in the picture. 
So, anyways. So what is going on? People getting tired here or what? I think Earl fell asleep. Did Earl fall asleep? Yeah, he must have. I don't see him. I think Earl fell asleep. Yeah, that is, he's lurking in the background. It's not, it's not working as good as it was. I think the water might be too cold. There we go. I think the water's too cold. It's just got a nice look to it. Rolling down over the DB Pro. Eventually, it should, like, do that same thing, I think. You know, I, I know what I need to do. Dad, it totally stopped. That's messed up. Why did it stop? You know why? Because it's going to add. If I add this to it, I think it'll start again. There we go. That's more like it. I don't know why I'm doing the dry ice. I don't know. It's just it adds adds to the adds to the shell. Kind of does look neat though, the way it's kind of like cascading over the the DB Pro. Anyways, Earl's out. Yeah, Earl, Earl is probably, yeah. Earl probably wiped out from working. I think Earl is reg, like back to his regular work schedule now. Is my guess. Or or he's up uploading or doing another, um, another video. Because this is also the time that he will actually... Yeah, he does, he does like his wrenching and stuff now, I think. Unless he's like feeding his kids too. He could be doing the uh, the single dad uh, scene. Robbie's RC, check out the little video you just posted. Got it, man. Let's see what do we got here. No way. The guy's head turns. <laughs> That's creepy.
Dude, that's so creepy. <laughs> that's pretty crazy. That's insane. That is crazy. That is crazy, the head turns. What you think of what? John Miller, what? Kyosho is coming out with a new... God, my eyes. I'm getting tired because everything's looking fuzzy now, even though I got glasses on. New MP10E. I have no idea. I didn't even know Kyosho was coming out with anything. The head moves, right? Isn't that crazy? That is nuts, man. You might get another slash two-wheel drive and keep it stock. Low center gravity chassis. Casey, what's going on, brother? MP10E. Uh-oh. It's going to blow again. It's doing that same thing it was doing before. It's a track buggy. Yeah, I didn't even know Kyosho was coming out with anything. Are you trying to say it's competition for the uh, DB Pro? Man, is this stuff supposed to give you like a headache or something? Because all of a sudden I'm starting to get a headache here. The other thing, too, that I'm not liking about Kyosho is they, um, uh, I don't know. Definitely doesn't look like it's something that would compete. Look, it's a carpet car, right? Looks like it's a it looks like it's a carpet car. Looks quick. Carpet or a very groomed a very groomed uh dirt indoor track is what it looks like. Car. It looks neat. I, I wouldn't know anything about it. I'm more of i uh, I'm realizing I'm more of a, uh, I guess, I guess people call it a basher or I'd rather call it a thrasher. I'm more into thrashing RCs right now, but don't get me wrong. I am getting into the speed stuff. I think Earl's got me hooked on that now. You have a techno ET 48.3. That stuff would probably be right up J.O.'s line right there. Right, J.O.'s talking about the rally car challenge. Nice. I'm just waiting for it to explode. It's not doing like what I was hoping it was going to do. <laughs> You've been dry iced, right? Clay track? Right, right, right. Clay track. <laughs> that's what I, when I say a groomed track, that's kind of like what I mean. I'm just not saying the right words because I'm not that type of driver. But yes, I get what you're saying, man. Clay track. And a DB Pro like yours. Right, the DB Pro is stinking awesome.
Hey, Haley, what you doing? Where's Daisy? Hey, Daisy. Daisy, come. There you are. What are you doing, huh? Getting in trouble? All right. All right. Well, it looks like uh, we are coming up to... What are we looking at for time here for the stream? We are looking at two hours and ten minutes. It's not a bad stream. It's not as long as I usually do it. We didn't go into one o'clock, but I suppose that's good enough, right? You guys think that's good enough for a stream? Two hours and ten minutes? Somewhere around there? Later all, have a good one. We'll see you later, uh, 6.2 V8 guy. See you later, man. Hey, 6.2 V8 guy, did you notice I changed hats? <laughs> Not everybody notices when you change hats. Heading to bed. We'll see you later, man. Rich Harley. I mean, ride. I, I, I can't see. Riding Harley. You sold your slash for the DB Pro. And anything I did, I love you, DB. I love my dear, especially with the new wheels. All oh, right, John. Yeah. Nah, man. It's the, the, the thing. It is literally un. I mean, it was unbelievable before, but it needed these tires and wheels for it. It definitely did. You love the GT three fifty. There you go, man. Dude, I change hats all the time. Hopefully, hopefully one of these days I'm gonna be wearing a Mopar hat. I don't mind Mopar either. Nine twenty three. They are still early, right, guy? But that's because you're in Cali, right? You guys are three hours, three hours behind. Man, it's 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 round in what, twelve thirty? So I think another five minutes. So once it hits twelve thirty my time, I'm just gonna end the stream. Well obviously we'll do a um we'll do a uh, COVID and coffee tomorrow morning. Well actually, no, I'm sorry. We'll do a COVID and coffee this morning. Cause actually it is already morning now. <laughs> Check out the pic you just posted, Robbie. All right, what do you got now? Fitbit thing is very low. All right, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There's no, I don't see a Facebook post yet. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. Oh, that's something J.O. would like. So there you go. Oh, am I showing the right thing? Am I doing this the right way? No, I'm not. I'm going the wrong way with it. It doesn't come out that good on the screen. It's like it's not focusing. It's focusing on my hat and not the picture. Why is it focusing on my hat? Nice stuff, Rob. Definitely, you've got some nice stuff in your collection, man. Hector Santos, the Midnight, right? You know it, the Midnight RC. The Midnight RC Guy Garage, Night night Live, whatever it is, Late Night Live with RC Guy Garage. That's literally going to be the new thing. It is point blank going to be like, we'll see. We'll see how long I can keep this up, this up for. How many, how many days in a row did I do COVID and coffee? I think I did COVID and coffee like literally like 20 plus days in a row. Like I, every single day was a COVID and coffee for like 20, 20 plus days. That was, that was pretty, yeah, that was pretty crazy. But now we're going to do, uh, now we're going to call it late night live with RC guy garage. You're going to hear me yelling at my dogs because they're chasing coyotes down the road and Night Owl, right. 
Six point two. Weren't you supposed to go to bed already? <laughs> you just can't leave, guy. It's the draw. It's like, what is he gonna bring out next? No way. You mean as soon as I dumped out of the live stream and took off, he brought out the eight, the the Elcast eight S because he's got it sitting under his thing right here. You guys didn't know, huh? Right under the right under the bench right here. You got a big what's in the box. So for all you guys that like hung out and stayed and. We're going to do a what's in the book. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's no outcast here yet. It's on its way, though. Same with the EXB. The EXB is on its way. So, late night, right? You know it. Late night with RCGG, man. All right, we got another couple minutes to go. It's 1228, 1229. I'm just going to jump into the chat real quick, see who's here. Flying Fortress guy, you jump in just when we're going to leave. They've been on. We've been on for almost what two and a half hours or two hours and fifteen minutes. That's crazy. All right, so we got Flying Fortress, we got Evo, we've got John Miller, Hector Santos, Smokey's RC, Robbie's RC, Shade Tree RC, six point two V eight guy who should be gone by now. He should be asleep. We got Chao's RC. We have got Italians RC. We have got. Casey Benson might still be here. I'm not quite sure. No, he took off. Uh, Mitchell's RC. We've got, I think I said John Miller. Demo RC took off. I didn't even see that he took off. Sorry, man. Uh, Ryden Harley took off. Uh, who else? Looks like that's about it. Earl Moore had stopped in for a, a, a spell. If you know why I say a spell, why do I say Earl Moore had stopped in for a spell? If anybody knows, throw a comment down below. There's something that, you know, some people don't know about uh, Earl Moorhead. Uh, GRC was here. I think was here. I think that's it. Jason Crow. Yeah, I think that's it. So anybody know why? Bam. Mitchell's RC. You got it, guy. Right. All right, man. So we are literally at 1230. It was uh, not a COVID. But it was a late night live with RC Guy Garage. It's the... Uh, next series that we're going to be trying, and it's obviously going to be at night like it is right now. Don't forget to, if you're, you know, not part of this channel and you want to be part of it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, throw a thumbs up, tells YouTube that, you know, things are cool and it's actually a channel to watch, and then advertisers will attach to my channel, which is what I want. And I know you guys don't want ads, but guess what? It's what's fueling the fire for this channel, and I need more fuel for the fire so all right um yeah click on an ad every once in a while let one play out trust me you're not gonna miss anything i'm still gonna be here content's still gonna be here but those ads need to be here too um yeah mitchell mitchell's rc man thank you very much for that super chat you know it's always appreciated you are a huge backer to the channel uh along with everybody else that's a subscriber like i always say the channel like I mean, I'd have content, but the channel wouldn't be where it is or what it is without you guys actually hitting that subscribe button, throwing that bell notification on, Flying Fortress. If the bell notification's on, guy, maybe you'll get a notification. <laughs> uh, some people don't get the um, notifications. I'm not exactly sure why. I'm not sure, like, what's going on. She's literally eating bugs everywhere. Ah. God. Well, I guess it's good because now there's not going to be any bugs out here. But she's literally, she's crunching bugs like popcorn. She is. She's eating like bugs everywhere. Can you hear it? Oh my God. She's just chomping on bugs. They're like these weird, like circular, like brown bugs that look like, like unpopped popcorn. And she's just like eating them all. All right, anyways, I'm out. You guys, like I said, get out there and rip it too. I got a bunch of videos that I just uh, uploaded within the last few days. Uh, DB Pro, 
uh, DBXLE. I got a Mad Van video actually in the queue right now. I just got to do a couple of final touches on it. I probably won't get till till uh, tomorrow. Um, we've got the Habao Hyper. What is that? Italians RC guy. Thank you for that super chat, man. Slam in the super chat. We've got. Uh, I ripped the Habao Hyper TT as well. We did break that, and we did a live. Did we do a live repair? Yeah, we did a live repair on that. So we did a live repair actually on. Was it on the other channel? Yeah, I don't know. Check the description because there's another channel too that I have. It's called RC Guy Garage Live. So it's basically the same thing, except it's just got live on the end of it. And what that is, is that is giving like that bonus content, the, the those times when I'm not going to be on for like three hours, you know what I mean? That it might be only 15 minutes. It might only be an hour. It might only be 20 minutes, you know what I mean? Uh, basically, it's just popping on. I might fix something, just hang out. It's literally what it is. Uh, RC Guy Garage, it's literally just a hangout. Uh, I don't really have all that much information other than other than what I actually know. And I'm not going to fake that I don't know things when I don't know it. So, all of a sudden, it's going to blow. Watch. Right on camera. It's going to pop. It's doing it. Oh, back away. Can you hear it? It's acting like it's going to explode again. There it goes. Look at it. No, it didn't do it. Ah. Maybe I can pop it. Can I pop it? Oh. I should use the other one. Actually, if I take these off. There we go. Now, I'm not going to drink this. <laughs> Dry ice is actually kind of cool. It does, does funky stuff. But anyways, uh, yeah, I'm just going to end the chat, or I'm going to end the, the stream. But don't forget to check out the other channel, RC Guy Garage Live. You know, I uh, also got some uh, Amazon links down there. Uh, if you click on any of the Amazon links, I get a couple of bucks. It's literally like pennies, but um, like let's just say you click on an Amazon link and then you go buy a house through Amazon. I'll get a couple of bucks from you buying a house or a car. <laughs> um, like again, like I said, it's literally anything just to feed this channel because uh, like people are always saying, it is what helps bring content to the channel because just how it works do you know what i mean jo we'll see you later man all right i'm out i'm out i keep talking i keep saying i'm out it's time to go out it's time to it's time to rip that bed time to rip that pillow <laughs> all right guys i will see you later covid and coffee tomorrow morning i'll probably do it early it'll probably be like covid breakfast and coffee because i think i might have some breakfast you know what i'll do you know what i'm actually gonna do I'm going to make my wife breakfast. How about this? This is going to be a unique COVID and coffee. Tomorrow on RC Guy Garage COVID and coffee, mark my words, I'm going to show you how I make my wife breakfast in the morning. How about that one? I, I'm the kind of guy that does that. I make a, I make a killer. Um, what do they call those potatoes? Home fry. I make a killer home fry. So tomorrow, or today, this morning, on RC Guy Garage COVID and Coffee, you're going to see me cooking up a storm. So, we might have a car. I'll put an RC car in the background just to appease you guys, all right? Earl, Guy, you show up just as we're leaving? Guy, what are you doing, Earl? All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how I cook uh, my wife's breakfast tomorrow morning. Because it's what I do. All right, guys. COVID and coffee tomorrow morning. I'll see you later. Everybody, thank you out there for subscribing to RC Guy Garage. This was Late Night Live with RC Guy Garage, and I'm out.